What's up guys? So today we're gonna start a new segment and I think it's gonna be called I don't know yet. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna call it, but all it's basically gonna be is just us messing around, working on our own personal stuff, and um, you know, maybe it'll be like a project segment, we'll call it. Um, and it's, like I said, it's just gonna be us messing around with our own personal project cars, doing stuff to them, and seeing how it turns out. It's probably gonna be ridiculous, it's probably gonna be not very funny or entertaining, or it could be, who the hell knows. We'll figure it out as we go along. And today we're starting off with my car. Um, I have a 2009 B8 A4, which is my daily. And I just purchased a full S4 swap, interior swap, I should say. And that, uh, well, actually, it, it isn't a full swap. It's um, it's full headliner, a, a, B, and C pillars, and everything else that goes along with it. So everything's gonna be nice and black, kind of like on the S4s, and we'll get rid of all the ugly tan that's in there. Eventually, we'll swap the steering wheel, which I actually have right here. If we could see that well, and that's out of a B9 uh, S line. So we have to get a new airbag, and we have to get um, a little jump harness to make all the buttons work and stuff. All right, before we start, check these out. We just finished these up the other day. These are going on the Evo 9. Pretty sick. It's like that uh, original uh, Volk bronze color. They're actually a little more bronze in person. But you can see they came out pretty damn sweet. And uh, before we start again, I'll take you through the through the shop. I don't think you guys have met Charlie yet. That was weird. Say hi. Charlie, oh, buddy. He's there. Over there, you got the little spot. It's like a little. Alright guys, here she is. Project of the day. My ship box. It's actually not a ship box, it's not too bad. It's a 2009 A4. It's got about 90k miles on it. It's a 6 speed, 2.0T, burns a shitload of oil, like they all do. I think eventually, if we, uh, if we keep it long enough, we'll put a, uh, a newer 2.0T in it. That way it's, uh, it's a little more reliable. It's an Audi, but never reliable. But today, what we want to do, show you guys, is if you can see that, see. Um, there we go. Uh, we'll be removing everything that's gray on the inside and eventually replacing it with everything that's black. So I have all the handles, the sunroof visor, uh, the regular visor, the whole center unit. I do have a mirror and that little piece right there behind the mirror that I'm gonna have to paint because uh, I just didn't find it and then like I mentioned before we'll change the uh, the steering wheel I have a little vent um, boost gauge that's gonna go in there I have a ECS short shifter um, and that's pretty much it for the interior eventually maybe we'll get some s4 seats we'll see um, but once that, all that's done, it's going to make it so much more comfortable in there. It's going to be just uh, much, much nicer. Uh, and just a little walk around the car. So, I bought it, I think about a year ago. Um, it had a couple of dents and stuff like that. So, I actually repaired the quarter panel. Um, so, that got repaired. This is actually an S4 trunk. It's got a little bit more of a lip to it. I did the, um, the LED tails, uh, changed the, uh, the little badge in the back, and it's got a full um, ECS turbo back. Um, it's the valve one, non-resonated. Um, so it sounds pretty good. 
sometimes it's a little too quiet I feel like but if I ever decide maybe I'll change it into um, I'll get rid of the uh, the catted down pipe and then we'll make it a little louder but it, like I said it is a daily so I want to keep it kind of tame um, and I think the end goal for this car is just to have it on have full-on bolt-ons and do um, bag it with some wheels and that'll make it like a perfect little daily I think um, pretty much it um, after this is done I think uh, I think the next step is maybe an Evo that's uh, I used to have them back in the day so I think I um, I want one again I never got a chance to do what I wanted with it so I think that's gonna be the goal anywho let's get into this all right because I don't know what the hell I'm doing um, I think the plan is to do maybe one side of the car Take, start taking stuff apart and then uh, we'll bring you guys along for the ride for the other side kind of show you how stuff comes apart this it won't be a do-it-yourself video um, we'll just kind of show you the process of what we're doing here um, my buddy Mike might be coming over he's gonna give me a hand and uh, we'll just mess around with this thing all night see how far we can get all right I think the rear seat, seat is pretty easy to do actually all you gotta do with this guy, I don't think you even gotta remove these clips. All you gotta do is just kinda pry it on there, slide it, slide it on there, and there she goes. It actually clips into those little clips right there. One and two. Looks like the previous owner had a dog. Filthy. Ooh, look at that. Glass. Is this window broken? That's an Audi one. Maybe his window was broken at one point. Well, look, a coin. What is this? A dollar? Yeah. Dollar richer, baby. All right, so we got one seat out. There you go, with the pain in the ass. This is the way this comes out. You got two triple squares up front, and then you slide this thing forward, and there's two more in the back, along with a bunch of plugs under there to get it out. And I'll show you the plugs after I get these bolts out. All right, because we have less than subpar tools to work with, these two triple squares gotta get on there um, to use a socket with it and then this one's a pain dick because it doesn't really fit so we're gonna mess with that one sometimes you just gotta make tools So under here we got this cover and then there is two little clips that hold the harness together that pops out now you have access to all your plugs so you can just pry them up take three those are two the three big plugs this last one comes out as a whole and then you gotta just pull this down here and then pops out and there you go she's free the last bolt over there was a nightmare I had to cut the plug as you saw before the plug the uh, the tool to uh, to get in there but I'm sure with the right tools it will be no problem so after messing around with these oh shit handles you can see that little slot there you gotta pull that out to remove the handle. In order to do that, you gotta make a tool. Otherwise they just break. And everything looks like it's held on just by these metal clips out here. And the, 
these two. You just pull that clip right out, the plug, and then it should just right, pop right out. These things, these things sucked. They barely wanted to come out and broke half of them. The A pillars have one bolt right on top there. It's actually hidden behind this little airbag thing. Everything else is just clips. They clip right in there and it tucks away in there. And then, like I said, that one little bolt there really holds it in and then you can just yank that thing out. Mike's helping me out. Say hi, Mike. Hi. That's Mike's truck. We paddle coated everything on. We'll show you later. Mike, what year is this thing? 2015. 2015. I'm going to take credit for this license plate. Just because. But we, we coated everything under there. Except the rear diffs, because Mike's a bitch and he won't do it. Yeah, that tip got burnt. The EGT's on this motherfucker. Oof. I don't know if I can curse on YouTube. Can I curse on YouTube? Mike, Mike's fancy though. He's got purple brake lines. And he wrapped the shocks. Purple. And the drive shaft. Oh, we forgot to mention. It's on bags. Big girl. All right, guys. Quick update. <sighs> this was not fun, but we got it out. Um, the headliner wraps around this like little ring here with clips. You kind of see me touching it there. Um, and then everything else is pretty much clips. You kind of yank it, yank on it, and uh, it's not a very pleasant feeling. You just feel like you're ripping shit apart. But um, once it's out, um, I guess the best way to get it out is to fold the seats down, and then you can get it out the trunk. Being that I'm not using that old thing, um, we just kind of yanked it out of the uh, the driver's rear door. Um, these guys, the B pillars, um, that bottom section of the B, B pillar, you just pull that and it pops right out. And then the whole thing just kind of wrap, um, unclips and pops out. It's, it's fairly easy. The seat belt, you can see there is hanging. Um, that just goes straight through the hole. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Uh, It just pulls right out through there. This goes into the headliner, that piece there. And then this hooks on the bottom to the black section of the uh, beat pillar. And that's pretty much it. The uh, This little center console it has one bolt in there. And then just these clips that kind of grab onto the headliner. So it's fairly easy also. Like I said, this isn't a do it yourself. I'm just kind of showing you guys what we're doing here. Mike's ready to kill himself. But yeah, she's uh, she's almost there. She's almost cleaned out. We're gonna do the C pillars now. They have a little, little clip right there that we'll pull out. And then this whole C section or triangle section just kinda, it's supposed to pull out. It seems like it's on there really tight, but it's out. And then we're gonna battle Taking the uh, the sunroof visor off, which hopefully we could pull this off, and then I'll slide out the back. Fingers crossed. So things escalated rather quickly. We have to remove the sunshade, so we just pop the uh, the whole assembly out. Later, realizing that we got to put it back in and open up the top of the sunroof and pull the glass. So once that's done, we'll have a nice black one in here. Until then, that giant hole. How do you feel about that, Mike? This is a mess. So bad. It is a mess. Everything's a mess. But we did 
blow out the um, the drainage lines for the sunroof. So hopefully no flooding inside in the future, as well as these guys in the sunroof assembly. So now we'll pop this fucker in and uh, get it going. So we successfully put the sunroof back in. It's a little hard to see, but the black sun visor is in, which is awesome. And it works, we checked it. Glass is back in, which is huge. Everything else is not, but we got some work to do. Can't wait to get the steering wheel in there. And then we're just gonna shove shit right back in. If everything works, this is all the stuff that we took out today. Which is almost everything. It's that, there's old sunroof shade headliner which we pretty much destroyed she's a trooper though and the car was open all day started right up I've been having issues with battery stuff Sunday, so I think what we'll, we'll do today is um, we'll clean up all the interior panels. They're a little dirty, not too bad, but they just need a little cleaning up. I think we'll, uh, we'll condition the seats so they're nice and fresh, and then and possibly, possibly, we'll see how, how everything goes. I do have a boost gauge and a short trooper for the car, um, so I'd like to clean everything up, get everything ready, possibly get the. Um, uh, the new headliner in so that's all in place and ready to go and then maybe start on the uh, the boost gate and the short trip that um, all goes to plan maybe maybe we'll drive it again today um, if not we'll continue tomorrow plastics they're in okay shape not the greatest but I'm gonna clean them up um, as we speak now um, I just vacuumed out and blew out all the seats the previous owner had uh, had a dog so there's a bunch of hair and stuff underneath there but I blew all that out vacuumed it and I'll get to uh, cleaning all this stuff after I'm done with this I'll probably just uh, vacuum out the interior get it nice and clean get a, get all the tools out of there and then uh, then finally uh, treat the seats. I have the uh, Sonax upholstery cleaner. That's going to be for all the fabric plastic piece and plastic pieces. And then this is um, a Swiss Fax um, leather milk and leather cleaner. And I got this color lock uh, little brush to kind of get all the dirt out of there. It's a little harder than I like, but it does the job. I cleaned some of these pieces yesterday. Um, just to kind of test it out and it works okay um, and then I have a bunch of towels just to kind of wipe everything off get it nice and dry so that's the next step plastics interior um, seats and then I do have to get the uh, headliner down from the rack um, that thing's covered in dust it's wrapped up but it's covered in dust so I got to blow that out and 
clean that up as well before I put it in. So that worked out pretty well. You saw me go through all this stuff. Again, the stuff's not perfect, but it cleaned up pretty good. There's like some scrapes and scratches. I guess that's from removing it out of the car or whatever. But once it's in there, I think it'll be fine. So that, that cleaned up pretty well. And the way you use this Sonax stuff, um, all I really do is just kind of put a little bit of foam on there, let it sink in. And then you could just kind of rub it and it comes out of the, the brush and just clean up the whole thing. Once you're done with that, then you kind of want to wipe it dry and get all that dirt and grime out of, out of the piece itself. And then that's pretty much it. It's fairly simple to do. Um, I think I'm going to take down the headliner now, blow that stuff off um, so it's nice and ready. And then I have another cleaner from PNS. Uh, it's a PNS interior cleaner and I'll do the sun visors, um, I have the mirror and the handles, so we'll clean that up so it's nice and fresh. Uh, maybe those things, I guess the previous owner used to smoke, got a nice freaking burn. So next part out I see, hopefully I could get this piece, get it replaced, so it's nice and fresh. And then we'll move on to the inside, I'll just clean everything up, you can see all the hair and junk that's in there. Um, I'll clean the whole thing up so it's ready and fresh and then we'll we'll probably have to do it again but I'd rather work in a clean car rather than a dirty ass car. Ready, stay, stay. got a little dusty we'll vacuum it out clean it with the thing with the cleaner hopefully all of it comes out 
but it's in actually really good shape. It's got a little crease right here, but I think once it's in uh, once it's in the car, it'll kind of straighten out. Um, other than that, it's pretty good. That was actually a lot better than I expected. The uh, the headline is drying there. I'm sure you saw like little spots on there. That's gonna all dry out and be good um, after it's done. Done, and then now it's time for this mess. As you can see, it's a disaster in here. But we'll get it all cleaned out. I'm gonna try to put a lot of this stuff on time lapse because I know it's kind of boring, but I want to get everything kind of cleaned out. And I think maybe after that we'll um, we'll pop the headliner in just so it's situated, so that way um, that way it's out of the way. I don't ruin it. Don't get it dirty again. And. Uh, I'll be in there. One one less thing to worry about. Everything else goes in fairly easy. I know I shouldn't say that out loud, but uh, we'll get that in after. But I'm gonna have to pull the uh, the radio, that vent on the left, and then probably the center console too. Everything's apart. I might as well just do the gauge and the uh, the short shifter uh, while I'm at it. Get it out of the way. seat and all those crevices nothing but hair inside those corners everywhere I just blew the hell out of it you can probably see the hair floating around still let's make this nice get all this hair out of here all those crevices was hair just stuck in there must have been like a lab or something because these things are pretty long. All that junk start stuck there. Oh, I have new pedals too. So I can't wait to install those. It's really going to tie in the interior. It's going to be cool.
right, guys. It's gonna take a while. I'm not gonna bore you with it. Um, I'll show you the after, after I'm done. A little before and after. That's one side. It's taken a lot longer than I expected. I should have known better. This is the other side. I might shampoo the, com the carpets a little bit before I put, pop the seats in. Just get like some of the uh, the browner spots out. It's just use. All right, that took like an hour, but it's a lot better. I gotta wipe down some of this stuff. It's kind of gross. No more dirt. No more hair. Feel better now. Stuff drives me nuts, especially under the seat where you can't get it, or right there. Everything falls by the seat. I'm gonna wipe down all this stuff. You can kind of see it's like dirty and brown. Wipe that down, and then we'll pull the seat down and see if we can shove the headliner back in. Um, I have to pull out the, uh, the third brake light. Um, after a while, they just stopped working, so um, I just ordered one on Amazon. I think it was like 50 bucks, so that's going to get replaced. But I can do that after um, I leave the hand, he headliner hanging down, and then I can just plug that little plug in, and then it slides onto, you can see that, there's like little little clips there that they, that the third brake, brake light slides onto. So we'll do that. Um, but before I, I guess before I do that, I gotta pull these off, which are those C pillars. It's like a big triangle. I gotta pull those out, out and replace them because they have right there, there's like a little plug that sits under the headliner. So I gotta do that first. The new C pillar is in. Be good. The little side piece by the seat is in. On this side, you see the difference now. That's the gray one. That was originally in there. Black one's filling in things nice. And that black piece sits right here to cover up all this stuff. Kind of fill. It's like a filler panel. It's the same material as the seats. It fits right there. But it's a good difference. It's the gray. It's the black. It's going to look good in here. Man, that sucked. I hate bending that thing. But I'll probably just run the wires, plug a couple things in. Uh, try to get this thing up there without screwing it up too much. So that little cover sits above the mirror 
the rear view mirror. Um, this piece I wasn't able to find in black to match the rest of the re uh, interior. So I'm going to scuff this down and just give it a couple coats of this uh, 2x flat black. It actually works really well. I've used it in the past, so uh, it should actually match, match the interior pretty good. And besides, it's a little piece that kind of just sits above the mirror. You don't really see it. Um, but once it's done, it should blend right in. It should be really nice. So let's go ahead and do that. It's just light 220. I'll scuff it up a little bit, get some of the dirt off. For those of for those of who don't know, obviously scuffing it up will give it a better bond for the for the paint to stick to it'll last longer. Pretty common stuff, but you never know. It's just some alcohol to degrease it, so there's no no issues with the with the paint sticking. Alcohol usually dries pretty quick too, so we'll be able to shoot this in a minute. And I think I'm just gonna do like two light coats, maybe three, depending how it looks. I might do a little um, scuff in between. We'll see. We'll see how it comes out. Let this dry. This coat dry, come back, do it again. All right, so while I was waiting for this to dry, I actually popped the uh, the headliner in and I was putting the uh, the oh shit handles on and I noticed I'm missing this guy. So I'm gonna take one of my gray ones and just spray it too. It's literally never gonna be seen, but if I'm doing this, why not, right? So I'll scuff this one too. Give it a coat of two. Quick coat of white down. I know it sounds ridiculous, but why the hell not, right? I always always like to scuff in between coats just so they have like better better adhesion. We obviously do uh, the powder coating, so it's like, it's in my blood. It's either right, it's either right or it's not. That's what it comes down to. fuzzies off. I know I'm touching my bare hands but they've been uh, pretty sanitized with this alcohol. It dry as shit. Uh, just went off camera and uh, blew it off with some compressed air. So it's nice and clean. We'll give it another coat. Good. All right, we'll let this dry. I'm gonna go mess with the headliner some more. Um, I'll actually show you guys right now what I did so far, how I got it up there, and what I did to make my life a little bit easier. All right, so yesterday I had Mike to help me hold this thing, but today I was here alone, so I, um, I actually got the oh shit handles and used use them to help me just kind of hold it up in place while I mess with everything else uh, you know get these trims 
uh, back in order. I switched the mirror out already. Um, it's fairly easy to do. I, I just kind of looked it up on YouTube. Um, all you have to do is literally just take the whole assembly and twist it and it just drops right in. And then to put it back in, you, um, you basically just put it back up there, twist it back on, and then there's a little plug right there. It's a little hard to see. Uh, you gotta plug that back in. And that's it. Uh, all this is gonna go back in. Um, and then once, let me just, just back down here. Once, um, once all these little pieces are go, go back in, the headline is just gonna sit nice and flush against the uh, the windshield. So, but it's looking good in here. I'm, uh, I'm a happy camper. It's gonna be nice. And as I'm doing this, I might as well just put all the A, B, and C pillars in, and just leave the seats out. Um, so when I when I do the gauges and the short trip, it'll be a little easier. But at least the uh, the headliner and all the trim will be pretty much done around the uh, the sunroof panel. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get those clips back in. I got a couple of them to clip in. I have to mess with the rest of them. There's like a little trim ring around the whole visor that just sits there, and you have to press up against it to get the clips to um, to clip in. Um, and then I just have uh, the B pillar and then the last C pillar to go back in. You can kind of see it back there. I guess this is just a window trim. I shouldn't have called it a C pillar. C pillar is back there. Window trim, B pillar, and A pillar. So it should be pretty good. There you go. That's a little better. You can see it now. It's nice and clean in here. Obviously I made a little bit of a mess, but we'll clean that up. Um, and then I just have to pop in the little trim that goes above the mirror, which we're obviously painting as we speak. The more I put in here, the better it gets. The visors are in, the lights are in. And I just noticed the uh, the previous owner of this headliner actually uh, gave me LED uh, bulbs in there. So I'm not a huge fan of those, just because they make the inside of the car look like a hospital room, but they're in there, so I guess we'll keep them. Black mirror looks awesome with everything else. And that's the rest of it. I'll keep you guys posted. The uh, the little trim piece is still drying, so we'll wait for that. And we have A pillars in, sunroof shade is in. I clipped the uh, the headliner around the sunroof shade. There's like a like a metal ring around there, like I mentioned before. The um, oh shit handles are in. The sun visors are in. Now I'm gonna put in the uh, the, the little center uh, overhead console, uh, and hopefully the sunroof opens back up. Hopefully that thing works, and uh, so we'll check that out. All right, just to give you a little before and after. That's the old one, obviously. New one, nice and black. It'll match everything. It's perfect. Let's plug this thing in. I can remember where the plugs go. And then this just clips in. So you got two clips on either side, and then this hooks right to the little holes right there. Actually, now that I look at it, I have something in there. Looks like a totally different car. It's so awesome. It's a little things. It makes all the difference. The exterior mods are awesome and we'll be doing those in the future. But to have a car that you can sit in and just feel comfortable in 
it's a uh, it's a whole nother experience and that looks super clean now all right on to the b pillars this is i think pretty straightforward we snake the uh the seat belt through and then there's a plastic clip clip that's got to go after that they they don't go in together so you have to make sure that they slip in separately and then so that's the bottom of it and then you can pull through the uh, the buckle and then this here you can see it it's got these clips there's clips right here that it slides onto right there um, these top ones slide into uh, there's two two holes right there that it slides into so this has to go in first pops in the uh, the bottom you got to just kind of pull back get this in here make sure all right so what actually happens is this bottom piece can go on and this slips over it And if you're not a dummy like me right now, you'll make sure that this is out. Right. That looks right. I'm just gonna pull the weather stripping around again so it's nice and flush. Later, this, this just kind of bolts up to the seat. Um, so it's gonna hang until we're ready for it. All right, I figured it out why it wasn't going on correctly. Now it works. So this little guy here that you squeeze to move your seatbelt up and down, it has to line up perfectly with the mechanism that actually allows you to move everything up and down. If it doesn't, it just gets stuck and doesn't do anything. So when you're putting the B pillar on, you have to make sure that that's uh, that's aligned in there, and then and then it works, and you're good to go. So, and then on this car, my other car, the um, the upper portion went underneath the plastic piece. This car, the upper portion goes above the plastic piece. So, uh, just keep that in mind when you're putting it in, and then that slides in there, and everything works the way it should. All right, I'm gonna do the other side and move on to the C pillars. All right, now for the C pillars. The C pillars have a bunch of tabs that fit into the uh, the back shelf. It's really hard to see with the camera, but you can kind of see it there on the bottom. All of these have to line up in there. So as long as you have this one, this first one there, the rest of them kind of just pop in place. So I'll show you guys how that goes in. Try to set up the camera the best I can. Or hold it. Obviously make sure all the wires are kind of tucked in. I don't want anything sticking out. See if it doesn't clip in right away, it goes behind the shelf and it creates a gap there. So you, you really got to make sure that that first one goes in. The rest of them will slip in, but that first one is a pain in the butt. That's what it should look like right in the corner there, kind of like this side. It goes in nice and clean. And then you just got to make sure all these little clips in here find their place to where they need to live and then just pop it right in. And that's the final product looks like it's it is a little sun faded but you know that's expected it's an older car so we have c pillar window surround 
BNAs, and everything else pretty much in here. Super happy the way it turned out. Definitely a bunch of work, but I think it's worth it. Our little paint project is drying. It's almost there. I did put one more coat when I was doing the uh, the inside. Of course, a little freaking speck. I'm going to sand that, give it another coat. This side came out a little dry, so I want to make sure it's good. And then I'll pop these in, probably off camera. I'm going to put the rear seat in back permanently, so might as well clean it now. I have my little brush and the uh, leather cleaner. So I already sprayed that on to let it simmer for a bit. I'll scrub it down, and then we'll use the, uh, the conditioner on there so she's ready to go. Just to give you a little preview of what it looks like. It basically brings the leather back, or pleather, or whatever this is, back down to like, you know, almost like an OEM finish. I think once the condition is on there, it really gives it like a nice matte uh, looking finish, which is kind of what we want. I hate anything super glossy. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if everything works. Uh, ECS valve exhaust. Let's see if that works or if we have to relink it. Oh yeah, everything works. And you can close it with the second button. We have a, a blinking LED in here. Can't see it. That one to the left seems to be blinking a lot. They're kind of discolored. Maybe I can find um, find a set of different ones. But everything works. Success for today. I'll catch you guys next time.
short trip there, boost gauge. It'll probably be boost gauge and the little cell phone mount I got from uh, from Renline. And um, so yeah, that's it. I'm gonna pop this in, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.